When buying a company, some investors hire a third party to issue a quality of earnings report. It's part of the due diligence and it helps the buyer better understand the seller's financial performance. But you might be wondering, why would a buyer need a quality of earnings report if the seller's financial statements have already been audited? The reason is that a quality of earnings analysis and an audit are not the same thing. They differ in terms of purpose, scope, and procedures. The purpose of an audit is to provide reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement. The auditor is trying to determine whether the financial statements conform to the relevant accounting standards, whether it be IFRS or US GAAP. The purpose of a quality of earnings analysis, on the other hand, is to adjust the seller's EBITDA so it accurately reflects the financial performance of the seller. For example, it's possible that 90% of the seller's EBITDA was attributable to a one-time gain that's not going to recur. If you're the buyer, you'd want to know this because it affects the price that you're willing to pay for that company. But an auditor isn't going to raise any issues about this, provided that the company's financial statements conform to the relevant accounting standards. Thus, an audit is about making sure that a company's financial statements conform to the relevant accounting rules, whereas a quality of earnings analysis is about making sure that the buyer doesn't overpay for the company and end up with buyer's remorse. In terms of scope, an audit usually covers the two most recent fiscal years. A quality of earnings report, on the other hand, will probably cover the last fiscal year or two, but it will also cover the interim period, anything that's occurred since the last fiscal year. Thus, if you commission a quality of earnings report on July 1st, 2021 for a company that operates on a calendar year basis, its most recent audit will have been through the prior calendar year, December 31st, 2020. But a quality of earnings analysis would cover not just the 2020 fiscal year, but everything that happened during the first six months of 2021. In terms of procedures, an auditor is going to test the company's internal controls, confirm account balances with third parties, and conduct analytical procedures to identify any accounting irregularities. The auditors will do things like physically count inventory and mail confirmations to customers. This is a very involved process, and for some companies, it can take months to conduct the audit. A quality of earnings analysis, on the other hand, could be conducted in just a few weeks. There won't be any counting of inventory or anything like that. Instead, what you'll have is an in-depth analysis of the selling company's financials to determine things like, has the company been too aggressive in its accounting? Has the company lost any key customers? To what extent is profit driven by one-time non-recurring transactions? To what extent is profit driven by non-cash sales? And what is the likelihood that those receivables will be collected? And ultimately, what is the seller's adjusted EBITDA? And how does that compare to the EBITDA that have been reported by the seller? Thus, you should view a quality of earnings report as a complement to an audit. They both have value, but they're conducted for different reasons and they yield different results.